If you don't trade with a model or have any form of entry checklist, it's going to be way harder for you to get profitable. So in this video, I'm going to cover an entry checklist that you can add to your own trading. This entry checklist is pretty much the framework in what you need in an entry checklist. So when you get experienced in using this entry checklist, I would definitely recommend adding on to it. So now let's get into the first example. First, we're going to cover the entry checklist. So we want to have a hourly bias, but of course you could add a daily bias, but I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible. Then you want to have a higher time frame drawn liquidity, which you could expect price to draw towards. And then you also want to have a lower time frame drawn liquidity, which you could base your trade entry on. And then your trade entry, you want to pretty much use your own model. In this example, I'm going to use the inversion failure model. Now that we know what the entry checklist is made of, we could start looking for a potential trade entry. So here on the four hour time frame, what do we see right off the bat? We see the price with buy side liquidity, then after that expanded lower, making a market structure shift. And on top of that, we also created the inversion value gap, which is now paired with a bearish value gap, which creates a balanced price range, which is also a confirmation. So already the bias is pretty clear that we're mostly bearish. So now we want to look for a higher time frame draw on liquidity. And what do we have down here? We have these relative equal lows, which is a very strong draw on liquidity, which I covered in my last video. So now we have the hourly bias and we also have the higher time frame drawn liquidity. So now once we want to go down into lower time frame or pretty much do a top down analysis and then look for a potential trade entry with our model. Here on the one hour time frame, what do we see? We see the price accumulated, which means consolidated, then manipulated above the high of the accumulation. So in that case, we could anticipate distribution lower, taking out the relative equal lows, which is our higher time frame draw on liquidity. So on the one hour time frame, we pretty much created the AMD model. Accumulation, then manipulation, and then we can anticipate distribution. And we can see that by the manipulation, making a move, fast move out of the range, and then a fast move back into the range again. Now that we've pretty much have checked off two of the entry checklist criteria, we can go down into the minute time frame and start looking for a trade entry with our model. Here on the 15 minute time frame, we see the price is trading within this large imbalance. We also see the price have created these relative equal highs, which is a very strong draw on liquidity. So in that case, we can anticipate price trading further up into the large imbalance, taking out the equal highs, and potentially also respecting this order block we have up here, which is a high probability order block. So let's see if price were to take out the equal highs. Right here, we see the price takes out the equal highs and also overlaps this imbalance. So now we will anticipate this order block being respected. Right here, we see that the order block gets respected and that price also disrespects this inversion further gap. So that means price is mostly bearish now. And we also see the price swept all this low resistance liquidity. So in that case, we can now go over to the AM session and take a potential trade entry. Here at 8.30, we see that we had this large downclose candle, which was probably news driven. So now we would like to look for a potential trade entry with our model. So in that case, we'll go down into the five minute time frame and even the one minute time frame. Here on the five minute time frame, we see that we have our higher time frame drawn accordingly, which was the four hour relative equal lows. So it would be nice if we could take a potential trade entry, which then could lead to price taking out these relative equal lows. And we also see that we have this short-term lowish price could potentially react off and then go up to this large imbalance up here. And right here we see price sweeps that low. So in that case, we could anticipate external to internal range liquidity. So we could anticipate price going up to this imbalance and going up to the LTE of the range. So right here. And right here we see price goes up to the OTE. So in that case, we can go into the one minute time frame and take a trade entry based on price taking out the relative equal lows. Here on the one minute time frame, we can now start looking for a potential trade entry as we have fulfilled all the criteria on the entry checklist other than just the trade entry which we want to use our model. So the first model I'm going to use is the inversion value model. And the criteria is first of all, we want to see price to from Peter Ray or take out buy side liquidity slash sell side liquidity. In this case, price is delivering from a Peter Ray that's within a OTE cycle. We want to see a candle close below the further gap, creating an inversion further gap. Third, it has to be a singular further gap that gets inversed and becoming an inversion further gap. 
Fourth, internal range liquidity must not be ran before retracement. And fifth, drawn liquidity has to be obvious. In this case, our drawn liquidity is the higher time frame drawn liquidity, which is the relative equal those. So in that case, we could use this inversion value gap as our potential trade entry. And first of all, target internal range liquidity, and then target all the way down to the relative equal lows. So let's just say we to take a trade entry when price made the retracement, <clears throat> put us stop loss at this high, and then target internal range liquidity to start off, which would be this value gap down here. That will only make a 0 0.7 risk forward ratio. So in that case, we could target this intermediate term low, or of course, target all the way down to the relative equal lows down here, which would make a 12.5 risk forward ratio. But that would be a little bit unrealistic if you're a beginner. So in that case, I'm just going to target the intermediate term low down here. So let's see if this would work. And right here, we see price makes the retracement and then takes out the intermediate term low. So let's see if price also can manage to take out the relative equal lows that we have all the way down here. It takes a while, but finally price takes out the relative equal lows. So if we just go back to the inversion value gap, we can see that price respected this two times, also at the consequent encouragement, and that the intermediate term low being a drawn liquidity would have worked for this case. And we also see we could have hold the trade entry all the way down to the relative equal lows if we wanted to. Here for our next example, we see that price is starting to respect this four hour busy buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. And we also see that we have these kind of relative equal highs up here. So already these two criteria are mostly checked off. But of course we have to go down into the one hour time frame and see if it's also bullish. Here on the one hour time frame, the bias is also pretty clear. So we see that we have the four hour busy right here. And we see price makes a fast sell side delivery into the busy and then a fast buy side delivery out of the busy, which pretty much confirms that price is willing to move higher. And what do we also see? We see the price created the inversion value gap, which is another confirmation for higher prices. So the one hour time frame is pretty much also bullish. Down here in the 15 minute time frame, we see the price has these three triple highs, which is relative equal highs. And price is going to target these relative equal highs as we see price delivered from this 15 minute value gap. And that means when price is delivering from a value gap, price is also most likely willing to move up to the next high. So in that case, we can move down into the five minute time frame and then the one minute time frame to take our trade entry. And in the five minute time frame, we see the price created another equal high to pair with the other equal highs. So the bias is also pretty clear on the five minute time frame as we also see the price is delivering from this order block. So in that case, we would drop down into the one minute time frame and start looking for a trade entry. Down here on the one minute time frame, we can see that we have our lower time frame drawn liquidity, which is these relative equal highs, and that we also have a higher time frame drawn liquidity, which is these relative equal highs up here. So in that case, we could start looking for a potential trade entry. And we see price takes out the relative equal highs, and maybe in lifetime price retraced into this order block, and then took out the relative equal highs. But there wasn't really any form of trade entry that you could pair with price taking out the relative equal highs right here. So let's just play price for more and see if there comes up any trade entry. And right here, we can see that price takes out one of the relative equal highs. So in that case, the final trade entry will be price taking out this high up here. Now, if we just play price through a bit, we can see that we made another relative equal high with the higher time frame drawn on liquidity. So in that case, we would start looking for the inversion value gap setup. And what do we have right here? We have this inversion value gap which fulfills all the criteria as price is delivering from this high time frame PDRA. Internal range liquidity has not been taken out. And that is the singular inversion value gap. And the drawn liquidity is also pretty obvious. And the body has a close. So in that case, we would take a trade entry, put our stop loss at the low, and then target the relative equal highs all the way up here. Let's see if this will work out. We see price retest this area, so now price should take out the relative equal highs. And we see price does take out the relative equal highs. So pretty much price fulfilled all the criteria by taking out internal range liquidity, which was these equal highs, retests the area, respect the consequent encouragement, and then takes out the 
relative equal highs up here.